In this video, I'm gonna make a shooting mechanic for this Nerf gun, and I'm also planning to make separate videos on shooting mechanics for a cannon and a bow. So if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, subscribe, and let's get started. For the assets, I'm gonna be using Kenya assets, and I'll leave links in the description. Let's start by creating a bullet prefab. So I'm gonna drag in this asset into the scene. It's very small, so let's scale it up by 10, and I'll rotate it by negative 90 degrees in the Z axis. So this is our Nerf bullet. I'm gonna create a empty parent, which is gonna have all the logic for this bullet. Let's rename it to bullet. And for this bullet, I'm gonna use a box collider 2D, and I'll scale it to closer fit the size of the bullet, something like that. And I'll also add a rigid body to D. So that's the physics setup for the bullet. And now let's create the script. I'm gonna create a new graph, call it bullet graph, click save, and we can start editing the graph. So the setup for the bullet is gonna be pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is set velocity on my rigid body. And for that, I will create a variable, which is gonna be velocity. I'll use a vector three, and let's start with the speed of 50, connect it to the value input, and now on start, the bullet is gonna fly right at the speed of 50 units per second. And I also want to remove this bullet after a certain amount of time, so let's add game object destroy with a time delay option and set it to be deleted in three seconds. So I'll connect this as the object we're deleting. And that is it for our bullet setup. We can test it. And all it does when the game starts, it flies forward, hits the target, and that's it. So that is what we're looking for. So let's drag inside here and create a prefab from the bullet. Uh, we can remove the bullet from the scene. And now it's time to configure our Nerf gun. So let's drag that in and let's also scale it by five on all axis, rotate it by negative 90. And also for the Nerf gun, we'll create empty parent. And I want to move uh, this gun so that the center would be at the place where the bullet is gonna be flying out. So I'm gonna change the position. So uh, that is pretty good. And now whenever we will instantiate the bullet, the bullet's gonna fly from this point. Now it's time to get those bullets flying. So we'll create a script machine. I'll do embedded for this one, added graph. And in here, I'm gonna add on mouse input event. And I want the action when the mouse is gonna be up. That's when I want to instantiate the bullet. So let's drag that out and add game object instantiate. I'm gonna attach it to the parent and the parent is gonna be this, but right after instantiating, I'll set parent to none so that this bullet won't be attached to the gun. That is one way of doing it, but we can also use game object instantiate with position and rotation and you get position of this object, also get rotation of this object. And then we'll also need to set a local scale of this object, because it's not one of the options. So let's get the scale. So that's the other approach that you can use if you don't want to set the parent and unset it. When you set it as a parent, the position rotation and local scale is used for the object that is being created. So now let's connect the original, We're looking for bullet. And that's pretty much it. Now let's position it a little bit further back, something like that, and we can test it out. If I click on the screen now, a new bullet gets created and we shoot the target. The last thing that we have is to get this gun to rotate. So let's go ahead and do that. If I just rotate this game object, you can see that it's rotating around the point where the bullet is flying out. And I want it to be rotated around this point instead. So I'll have to create another empty parent so that I can make that offset. 
So set this to zero. And I'm going to rename this to offset. And I'll move it to a point where I want the rotation to be at. So somewhere around there is going to be good for me. I'll rename this to a gun. And now if we rotate on the Z, you can see that's the point that we're rotating it around, which looks better. We can move it back to the position that we want the gun to be at. And in here, we'll add a script machine, embed it, added graph. For the rotation, I'm going to use touch rotate. This is the unit from my Spock package, which has over 60 units. If you're interested in getting this package, I'll leave a link in the description. But if you haven't purchased a package, I will create something uh, to replace this at the end of the video. But for now, I'm just going to stick with this. And I want to rotate it only when I'm moving on the screen Y axis and I want rotation on the Z axis. So let's set it to negative 40. You can adjust this value based on the sensitivity that you want. And you can also adjust the smoothness if you want more delay for the mouse movement. So that's all you have to do if you have the Spock package. And now we can click play and see how it's going to work. So if I click on the screen and drag it, you can see that it's moving up and down. And when I aimed at the point where I want to shoot, if I release, the bullet is still flying straight, no matter what my rotation is. So we need to make some adjustment to our bullet script. Let's stop the game. Go to our bullet prefab, added graph. And in here, we want to use the rotation of our bullet to change the velocity direction that the bullet is going to be flying at. To do that, we can use the transform transform point unit. So pass the velocity as the position. We're going to be transforming it based on this object's rotation and pass that value as the velocity. That is it. Now we can test and see if the bullet's going to fly in the right direction. So now that looks pretty good. We can select the prefab and change the speed at which the bullet is flying. So let's try something like 40. And you can see that it's slower now. But if we go above certain speed, so let's say we set it to 200, you can see that the bullet hits the target, but it passes through it. And if we set it to 1000, you can see that the bullet doesn't even hit the target. If you want the bullet to fly at the faster speed, what you want to do is change the collision detection from discrete to continuous. And that's going to detect if the bullet hits the target on its path. But speed of 1000 is probably a bit too fast for a Nerf gun. So let's set it back to 40. And with a speed of 40, we can use discrete collision detection. So there you go, we created the shooting mechanic for a Nerf gun. Now, for those of you that don't have my Spock package, let's go and get that rotation working for you. So I'm going to disable this touch rotation and we'll try to recreate something similar to that. I'm going to use on mouse input and the action I'm going to use is hold. When you set the action to hold, it's going to be triggering this unit on each update event. Now what we can do is get mouse position and store that value. So we'll have to create a variable mouse position. This can be f vector three. Hold L down to make it a set variable and save that value. Now we want to do it only once per each mouse down event. And you might think use the action down to set the variable, but you don't have the control of which one gets triggered first, the hold or the down event. So to make sure that the first frame, when you hold the mouse down button, the mouse position gets stored, just use a once unit. And after the first frame, we want to transform, rotate our object, and we're going to be rotating it on the Z axis. So let's calculate the value that we want to pass in here. We're going to take the current mouse position and subtract the stored mouse position. 
So that's going to give us the change in mouse position. And now we are only interested in the y axis. So let's grab y axis. And before we pass it in as an angle, we probably also want to multiply. I'm not sure what value we're going to be multiplying it by just yet. So I'm going to leave it at one. But after we multiply, we can pass it as the z angle. After we rotate the object, I need to save this current mouse position. And I'll just do it by pass it in right here. And that's going to save our new mouse position. One more thing that we'll need to do is reset this once unit. So I'm going to duplicate this mouse input and we can use the up action here, pass it as reset. And that should give us a working graph. Now the touch rotate is currently disabled, but I'll remove it so that it'd be cleaner. And let's go and test it out. And there we go, we can rotate it. The rotation is probably a bit too sensitive. So we can adjust it, multiply it by 0.5 to make it half as sensitive. And now we'll have a bit more control over it. So that's a shooting mechanic for a Nerf gun. The next video that I'm going to make is on a mechanic how to shoot a cannon. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.